What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip. Today we're talking about something that a lot of people tend to ignore and it's a huge issue that is affecting millions and millions of smartphone users. So what we're talking about today is OLED screen burn-in. Now this is something that a lot of people have discussed, they've thought about, but maybe they never thought it would affect them. Well, my best friend Darren, many of you guys have seen him on the channel, this is his Galaxy Note 8. It's a year and a half old, and it has some of the worst burn-in that I have ever seen on an OLED display, period. This is currently a white background, and I can easily read the entire keyboard. So when I saw Darren's phone having this bad of screen burn-in, I went, you know what, is this affecting a lot of people? And so I started searching the internet and I found tons of comments from people that are experiencing this exact issue. Now one of the videos I was watching said that it would take several years for screen burn-in to happen and there's a lot of responses that said, a period of years, or my Galaxy S9 only took two months to have screen burn in. Here's a comment that I found. Who else is watching this with an already burned in display and it had 297 upvotes, which is kind of insane, I think. Leslie Curtis says, I returned two Galaxy S8s because of screen burn in. It doesn't take years for it to happen. It happens in weeks or months. There's no reason that you should have to turn down your brightness on an $800 device. So instead of telling us how to fix it, Let's demand a solution from the manufacturer. Nuclear SMG says, I had burn-in in my Galaxy S9. Fortunately, it was under warranty when they got the burn-in, so I took it to the service center and they replaced the screen and battery for free. So that's nice of Samsung to cover it uh, just from screen burn-in. Now, if you have an iPhone 10, I'm really curious if Apple would say the same. I was looking up what happens to iPhone users and uh, CNET has an article about this and they said that iPhone 10 warranty coverage does not cover screen burn-in. Apple is considering it a user error. Just like if you had an iPad that became bent from daily use, doesn't matter, you didn't use it right. Even though in theory you should be able to normally use your device just as you normally would use it without having major defects like screen burn-in. Magical Batery says, had this problem with the Galaxy S7, now I have it with the Galaxy S9. Samsung sucks, I will never buy another Samsung. But here's the thing, it's not about Samsung, it's not about Samsung at all, it's about an OLED display in general. Now the reason why this has become such a big deal is that when most people go to buy a smartphone, they're not thinking like, oh, I'm gonna have to deal with horrible screen burn-in. No, they're just like, which phone has the brightest, most beautiful display, the longest battery life, the most powerful processor? They don't think about screen burn-in at all. And the simple fact is almost all of the current top flagships use an OLED display. So let's talk about Darren's Note 8. Now Darren loves to watch content, view content with a high amount of brightness. I think higher than the average person. But let's take a look at Darren's actual display settings. So this is the actual display settings that Darren uses regularly. He has adaptive brightness on, he has blue light filter off, night mode off, and screen resolution is just 1080p. Screen timeout at 10 minutes of inactivity. Okay, so these aren't insane settings. I think the main culprit here is probably after 10 minutes of inactivity. Anyway, we'll, we'll go over a bunch of tips on how to prevent screen burn-in later on in this video, and that's just kind of like a hint at one of them. This adaptive screen brightness is really important because it'll adjust the screen brightness up and down depending on your environment, and hopefully that'll help prevent screen burn-in. Well, Darren even had his adaptive brightness on the whole time he's had the device, and we still have this horrible screen burn-in issue. And I mean, you can still see the screen burn in even when we're on other menus, it's like interfering. So Darren saw the first screen burn in within six weeks of buying the device. I think that's ridiculous, okay? Now the screen burn in initially was not very bad, it was barely noticeable, right? Like, but then over the course of the last year and a half, it's gotten progressively worse and worse to the point where it's like hard to read complex or small text. Uh, and it definitely interferes with viewing a lot of content. And I mean, this is like a deal breaker, I think, for most people. If screen burn-in ever gets this bad on your device, you're probably gonna be looking to get a new device as soon as possible. Now, Darren did point out to me that it's far more noticeable for him when he's watching like a simplistic uh, show or he's like looking through like a predominantly like a white uh, web page for example You're gonna end up noticing it a lot less on complex images where you're gonna have a lot more varieties of color That just kind of blends in the screen burn effect So the thing that causes screen burn in is that you have three sub pixels on every pixel of an OLED display a red sub pixel a green sub pixel and a blue sub pixel these three sub pixels combine their colors to make the myriad of colors that you see on your display but as each of these sub pixels are used in different amounts of brightness and intensity and frequency, different areas of your display will dim over time. So along
along this bottom bar, the reason why it's turning reddish and pinkish is because the blues in the display are no longer emitting as bright of a light. They're worn out. And once your screen is worn out, there's no reversing it. Brain Man, that's a great name for this comment, uh, 2331 says, now I have a question. I play PUBG Mobile a lot and I have screen burn-in issues. Would it help to use inverted colors in order to kill the other pixels too and make the burn-in less appear apparent? Or is that just stupid? <laughs> yeah, is that just stupid? Because if you burn the other half of the pixels, you'll just end up with an all pink screen instead of an only partially pink screen. So don't do that. So basically screen burn-in is irreversible. It's, it's permanently damaged. And oftentimes it's not covered by warranty. It's gonna vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. And it might actually vary from tech to tech. So like if the tech thinks it's something that should be followed under warranty and a different tech thinks it shouldn't, then you might get completely different results depending on who you talk to at each specific company. So one of the main questions is how quickly can this screen burn in occur? This is my Galaxy S8 Plus that I had from a couple years ago. I was using it to film a time lapse of my Rock Candy Drop test case and I had it filmed for about a month and after only a couple weeks of filming, I, I took the footage and was looking at the footage and I was like, wait, there's a massive screen burn in where the record button was. And that was because I also had the brightness up for those first two weeks of recording. So that means that screen burn in can happen very, very quickly. Let's talk about ways you can prevent screen burn in. The number one tip for preventing screen burn in is just lower your overall average brightness. Like, I mean, it sucks. You bought this thousand dollar Galaxy Note 9 and now you can't even use it at max brightness or even two thirds brightness because you're afraid of screen burn in. Like it's a it's a really big bummer. I think the only time you should really be using your device at max possible brightness is when you're in direct sunlight so that you can see it. And that is actually one of the biggest issues with Samsung devices because it uses the light center to boost the brightness beyond what you can normally attain in an indoor environment. That means that if you're using your Samsung device outdoors a lot, especially with max brightness so you can see it, you are probably the number one candidate for getting screen burn in really, really quickly on your device. The second big tip is if you have an OLED display, always have your auto brightness enabled because it will dim your display whenever you're in an indoor environment. So it's gonna automatically keep that display brightness extra low. There's a reason that Apple hid your automatic brightness with the release of the iPhone 10. They made it far harder to find and change and the main reason reason I think is that they wanted most users to be using that auto brightness so that screen burn in is less of an issue on iPhones. Another big tip is to keep your screen timeout as low as possible, preferably like 30 seconds. That's what most manufacturers set it to out of the box. But if you keep it at least to two minutes, that'll help out a lot if you accidentally leave your display on on your device. My last tip for helping prevent screen burn in is be aware of apps that have static images like logos and videos video games that are always in the top left corner. Guess what? If you play a lot of hours of that video game, you will have horrible screen burn in after a period of time. Another good example of an app to be cautious about is YouTube when you're viewing videos in portrait mode. When you're watching a portrait video on YouTube, I'm not the kind of person that ever watches portrait videos on YouTube, but apparently there's a lot of you out. For those of you out there that do watch a lot of YouTube videos in portrait mode, it is extremely dangerous, for example, to watch YouTube videos uh, in portrait mode while you're going to bed. The reason why YouTube in portrait mode can cause screen burn in is that the top one third of the device is moving, it's playing a video, while the bottom two thirds of your device will be displaying a bright white screen that's just static. And this isn't so bad if it's just like, like for a few minutes here and there, but if you're someone that watches hours and hours of YouTube videos all the time, this will cause screen burn in because the top one third of your device is not being used at the same rate as the bottom two thirds of your device. Now the whole screen burn in issue has become a, I think a lot more important issue than it was a few years ago. Like a few years ago, if you look at smartphone uh, buyers patterns, they would tend to buy a smartphone every two years because their cell phone company would give them like a free upgrade. And so you're able to get out of any issues. Like if your screen had burn in issues, you could just get a new one after two years. Well, ever since people started buying their phones outright or paying payment plans that then go away after two years, well, now you have people keeping their phones and keeping their cell phone bills at lower prices uh, for like four or five years. So with people planning to use their smartphone for longer and longer, 
OLED screen burn in will become a bigger and bigger issue. With basically all of the top flagships using OLED displays, what are the best smartphones that use an LCD display instead of an OLED so that way screen burn in is not an issue. First up we have the Asus Zenfone 6. This is a 5000 milliamp hour battery with a 48 megapixel camera on it flips from the front to the back. Uh, makes it a good all around device. It's also a bezel-less device so you have no notch, no cutout. It makes it a really attractive option especially since it's only priced at $500. I'll be having a full review of the Asus Zenfone 6 sometime soon so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on that review. Now there are two great iPhone options. First up you have the iPhone 10R. This uses a 6.1 inch LCD display uh, and it's a beautiful display. Arguably the best LCD display on the market can get very bright, it's very colorful, and again, it shouldn't suffer from screen burn in nearly as quickly as OLED displays. Two other good options for the iPhone lineup is the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus. Now these, of course, are last year's iPhones, so you're gonna be able to get them at significantly discounted prices. Last up, we have the Razer Phone 2. This utilizes a very bright, very nice uh, LCD display, brighter than the first Razer Phone. Uh, now this has a 120 hertz display so the fluidity is just fantastic and it's got a large battery a decent camera I think the main downside here is that it's not a full bezel -less display but on the upside you have two massive front firing speakers on the top and bottom that also act as nice bezels if you're actually playing games that's it for this episode of gizmo slip I hope you found it informative and helpful if you want to see more videos be sure to hit that subscribe button and if you enjoyed this video smash that like button thank you guys so much for watching I will see you in the next next one, Brandon out.